And again, we are going off the beaten path. Another one as soon as I hit the water. Oh man, if I get a big one, I'll know how I'm gonna keep it pinned on here. Got something, got something. Oh, beauty. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Look what I have to show you right here. This is gonna be an epic challenge. Look at this thing right here. This is a 1950s antique spinning reel made by Luxor. Pezon and Mitchell. Hopefully you guys can see it pretty well right there. This thing is an absolute classic. This is something that somebody was using nearly 70 years ago. And we're gonna put this thing to the test today. I got it on a uh, medium action spinning rod here. And I just can't wait to use this thing, man. This was sent to us by another fishing YouTuber, Fishing with PH, up in New Jersey. He issued out a challenge to a bunch of different YouTubers to go ahead and use this thing and see if we can catch fish on it in our areas. So this thing has been all over the US already. We are the last channel to film with this and we're gonna put this antique to the test, man. See if this thing can actually catch some fish. So that's what we're gonna be using right here today, the Luxor vintage 1950s spinning reel from France. I can't wait to get out on the water. So let's get right down there. Hopefully we can catch some fish on this thing today. Let's get into it. All right, guys, here we go with the Luxor. There it is right there. And this is what we have to get through to get to the spot today. I had a feeling things were gonna be a little bit overgrown here, but I did not expect something this extreme. These pricker bushes are everywhere. And it looks like there is a little bit of a path. So we're gonna try this out. Oh man, I love adventuring and stuff, but I'm not a huge fan of going through pricker bushes. Hopefully this pays off, man. We should be able to get some fish here in the heat of the day. We got a real feel of like 100 degrees right now. And when we got weather like that, you gotta go to your spots that are a little bit off the beaten path. That's what we're doing today to catch these fish. But I'm so excited to try out this Luxor reel from the 1950s and see if I can actually land fish on it. I'm gonna sit my bag down right here. Get on all through this crap. And here is our body of water that we're going to be fishing on. I might even throw some top water. I'm not sure if anybody's used the Luxor reel to catch anything on top water yet, so that would be cool to be the first. But uh, got a bunch of minnows scattering off and some bluegills. It's a great sign. I've only been to this pond one time in my life, so I'm not exactly sure what's in here. I did catch a couple of bass, but you really never know. So we're gonna be hitting up this pond and one more pond to film this Luxor video right here. I'm so excited to get a fish on this thing. It is gonna be throwing me off here cause it is a left hand retrieve. I like to go with the right hand. I've never even used a left hand in my life. So it's hard enough going with a 1950s reel, vintage reel, this thing right here, but it's gonna be even tougher reeling that in with the left hand cause I'm completely not used to that. Starting off with a little rooster tail right here, one fourth of an ounce. I think we got about four foot of depth out here, so it should be able to stay up out of the scum there. But let's get this thing rolling. Listen to this drag right here. <laughs> thing sounds every bit of the ancient reel that it is. Wanna get that set nice and tight. Imagine we hook into like a carp or something huge with this. All right, first cast with the Luxor. If I can figure out how to get this thing going, it's just such a weird feel in your hand. All right. See if we can nab one on the first cast. Here we go. Wow, cast really well. Listen to that thing. This feels so weird having the rod in my right hand and reeling with the left. I think that's just gonna be the biggest struggle is getting used to that because you can't switch this out with the retrieve. <laughs> Listen to that thing go. <laughs> oh man, this is hilarious. All right, no first cast fish, but that's okay. We got time here today. We're gonna nab some. 
Oh, looks like it's kind of caught around the drag right there. I'll have to watch that as we go on today. Check out the plane. Oh, I just have a bite, possibly. So unnatural reeling like this. That thing really does cast well. It's amazing. No way. Oh, we got one. We got one. We got one. Luxor fish. <laughs> I'm trying to reel fast and keep him pinned so he doesn't come off. It's so unnatural though. It's so unnatural. Oh, it's a bluegill. <laughs> All right. First fish on the Luxor. It's a big old fat bluegill right there. Let's see how many species we can knock out today little beauty see you buddy all right first one on the Luxor that's sweet starting off small we'll work our way up to the bigger fish but that was not three cast in before we actually got a fish on so that's a positive sign for the prospects of the day and with this rooster tail who knows what we're gonna be able to catch the gear ratio though on this thing is just so freaking slow. It's like, oh man, if I get a big one, I don't know how I'm gonna keep it pinned on here. Is that another one? Yeah, we got one, we got one. Yes, another one, back-to-back -back cast, second species. A little larger right there on the Luxor. Luxor largemouth. It's kind of good we're starting off with some small fish here just to break me in a little bit get me used to this reel but boom there we go second fish of the day on the luxor reel see you later buddy you just got caught on a 1950s antique great start to the day really good start castability of this thing is really helping me out because they're hitting way out there another one another one i think it's just so hard the gear ratio is so slow do i have him this is such a struggle i think he's on there yeah he's on there oh he came off he spit it at the last second oh what is this gear ratio does it say on here uh I'm not sure what the gear ratio is, but it's the slowest one I've ever fished with by far. But they're slamming this rooster tail right now, so. Big old blow up over there on the right side reeds. Might have to throw on that top water pretty soon. Seeing a lot of activity on the top. I need the fish to bite like right here so I don't have to reel them in from way out there. It's like you got to reel this thing a thousand times just to get a fish in. My respect for the people who fished in the 1950s is going up dramatically right now. Man, I'm already drenched in sweat. I've only been out here like five minutes. It is just one of those absolute scorchers of a day. Sun is beating down, the humidity is crazy. Real feel of 100. But the fish are biting, so that's all that matters, really. Let's continue to wade our way along the shoreline here. Pretty small pond, so we're gonna cover as much water as we can in the time that we have here. And I also wanna spend a lot of time at the other pond, so we'll try to be nice and efficient with how we go about covering the water. One thing that is so unique about this reel is the amount of space in between the top of the reel and the bottom where you put the line on there's like no space in there whatsoever it's crazy to me how like thin that is compared to most reels you got like that much room this one there's just not much room to put line on there pretty cool to see the architectural differences from back in the 50s till right now 70 years later all right there should be a fish over this way oh what happened there that was not supposed to happen. Got some sort of tangle. What in the world? 
put that right through there. Hopefully that gets us back in action. Let's see. Yep, should be good to go now. Fish. Oh, that's a little bit better too. That's a little bit better. Come on, look how, look how much of a struggle this is. Oh. A little bit bigger fish. All right. All right. Third fish already on the antique reel. Beautiful. The uh, rooster tail is putting in work. We're getting some nice little bass out here. Obviously nothing too big yet, but it's still super fun to catch and we're catching them on this antique. Uh, wow, this thing casts a mile. Do you see that? All the way to the other side. Oh, another one as soon as I hit the water. Okay. I'm like walking backwards to keep tension and pressure on the line here because the gear ratio is so slow. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. Thankfully, they're staying hooked somehow for the most part. It's got to be a bass bigger than this in here, too. A lot of dinks. Oh, I would just love to get something big on this reel. But hey, no complaints here. I mean, we are catching fish out of a pretty cool little pond. Another nice one. See you later, bud. We're four for five on fish we've hooked. I mean, our hookup ratio has not been too bad, despite how hard it is to reel with my left hand. I was two casts in a row. Let's see if we can make it three. That's one. Oh, that's a little bit better, guys. That's a little bit better. I actually felt him pulling pretty good. All right, he's running straight towards me and I cannot keep up with him. Uh, come on. Where you at, bud? Is that a crappie? I think that's a big crappie. Yeah, really nice crappie. All right. All right. No way. <laughs> and he's hung in a tree. Yes, that is a nice slab, guys. Wow. Luxor is getting it done. Wow. Okay. That is like a yellow crappie. If you check out the colors on him. Check that thing out right there. Beautiful slab. Look at the mouth on him. Wow. All right. I mean, you can see the size of him right there next to the reel. That is a really good crappie. Okay, buddy. Thank you so much. See you later. Look at him just chilling. Going up in the shade. He's like, oh, I've never been to this side of the pond before. Awesome. Three species already. You guys know here at the channel, we pride ourselves on being multi-species anglers and we're putting in the work today. Three already. Five fish, three species, one antique reel. Getting it done. It might really seem like I'm reeling this thing super fast right now, but I'm really not. Like, as fast as I'm reeling, it's just like a steady average retrieve because the low gear ratio. But man, great results so far. Especially in the heat of the day, it's like 1.30, 2 o'clock. It's the time I had to fish, so I had to come out here in the heat of the day, but Normally this is a dead time for fishing, but this pond is putting in some solid, solid results. Gonna throw a couple more casts in this pond, and then we're gonna head on over to the one I really wanna fish today, because that's in the shade a little bit, and it's just loaded with crappie. So we're gonna get over there in a second. The bite's good here, but uh, I'm actually having a little bit of technical difficulties. The camera's overheating, because I'm standing out here in the baking sun, and. It's just not having any of it. It keeps shutting off on me. So I'm gonna crawl my way into the shade at the next pond in a second, but let's see if we can't get one more out of here. <laughs> Might stop back here on the way 
uh, home as well after we finish up at the other pond. Oh, as soon as they hit the water, that's right where the crappie was. Oh, I think it's another big crappie. Might be a school over there. Uh, trying to keep pressure on and doing my walk. <laughs> this one's bigger than the last one if it's a crappie. Oh my gosh. Yes, big old crappie. Big old crappie. Stay on there, bud. Yes. Uh, I guess it's not bigger than the last one. He was fighting harder, but good fish still. Okay, I might have to stay here a little bit longer. Another beautiful slab crappie. Wow, I didn't even know they were in this pond. Thought it was just bass. I probably walked 20 feet just trying to keep tension on that thing. It's probably a real big one sitting over there. Normally with ponds like this, when they do have crappie and you're catching them in those, you know, 10, 11, 11 and a half inch range, there's always one king of the pond that's over there. And on the other pond we're about to go to, that king of the pond is about one and a half pounds for a crappie, that's really nice. So I'm thinking there's probably one about that size in this pond. Cause those are some real quality ones we've been catching already. Oh man, my camera literally just died because of the heat again, but I cast it over right where those crappies were. Got another bass on the end of the line right here. We're just slaying them, man, with his rooster tail. It sucks that I have to leave this pond to find some shade so my camera will actually work. And so you guys will be able to see these catches right here. But we're slaying them in this pond. About a little pounder right there. Man, it's like every cast right over in that corner. making our way over to the second pond of the day and again we are going off the beaten path much like the youtuber who let us borrow this antique reel fishing with ph does going off uh in some hard to get to ponds and places look at the deer over there running around but uh yeah we are making our way through the jungle to get to this pond i'm wearing full waders right now because you never know what you're gonna step on over here but it is super, super hot in here. I literally got puddles of sweat building up in the shoes of my waders, but I'd rather be wearing waders when I step on a snake as opposed to just sneakers or flip-flops or whatever I normally wear out here. But the reason I chose this pond to really center this video around today is because it's one of those ponds that only me and Maddie and one other buddy of mine fishes. I don't think anybody else knows about this place. And we haven't fished here in a solid month, month and a half. So anytime you have a pond this small, it kind of takes a while for it to reset and reload after you come out here and slay them like we usually do out here. So we've given it plenty of time to reload and reset before we fish it again, just for the purpose of this video here today, because I wanted to be able to catch a lot of fish with this antique reel. So I'm hoping that long-term strategy that I came up with months ago pays off because this pond has just been sitting here waiting for me and waiting for the Luxor for a month or a month and a half. Well, these weeds are literally about five and a half feet tall. They're up to my chest, but here we go. You guys have seen this place before. If you've watched our crappy fishing videos and I think we've done two videos here so far. This will be the third. But last time we came out here, between the two of us, me and Maddie, we combined for well over a hundred crappies in one quick night of fishing. So I also caught a three, was it three and a half or almost three? I'm not sure, but it was a really nice bass out of this tiny pond too. So we got loads of potential. There's also pickerel in here. And if there's pickerel, there's bass, there's crappie, there's bluegill. Who the heck knows what else could be in this little swamp? Oh, <laughs> it's 
something came up and slammed it first cast. I saw his mouth just up here. These fish should be fired up and ready to munch, man. I'm gonna go ahead and switch up to a little white grub. That's what always slays it here. We had one bite on the rooster tail, but to be honest, I don't wanna lose this thing. And there's so many snags in here. I know I'm gonna lose a couple of lures today. So I'm gonna throw on the white grub there and see if that produces for us today. Got the white jig on here, ready to rock and roll. Let's get one out of this pond. All right, that's a cast right there. That's gonna get it done for us. Come on, big crappy. Where are you at? Oh, there's a bite. Just grab the tail and let go. They're acting weird today. Oh, oh he had it again. They are acting very strange, very non-committal. I guess this is kind of to be expected in the heat of the summer, but based on the results of the other pond we started out at, I was thinking it'd be the same way over here, but they're being pretty finicky right now. Got it. Oh my gosh, dude, giant crappy. Giant crappy. That thing was like one and a half pounds. That might have been the Mondo. That might have been the Pond Monster. He was right there. I don't know. I guess I'm just not getting a good hook set because I can't really catch up to him with the uh, slow gear ratio. But I thought he ate that thing. Hopefully he comes back for it. A lot of times if they don't feel the hook, they'll come back for it, but I'm not sure if I had the hook in him or not, or if he just was on the tail. That was the fish we were looking for though, man. That sucks he got off. All right, let's head on down to the next little clearing. If you can even call it that, there's not too much clear about this spot, but there is a little bit of a path that me and Maddie have carved through here. Check out this prang mantis. Come here, buddy. Come here, bud. Eh, never mind. One of these times I'm gonna be walking along here and step on like a six foot water snake and it's not gonna be fun. Hopefully today is not that day. You will literally hear me scream at the top of my lungs. Got something, got something. Oh, what are you? Holy crap, nice bass. Big old Luxor bass, please stay on. Dude, what the heck? Yeah, I need to land this thing on this reel, man. This is the tank that I was talking about in here. Come here, buddy. Get over here. Get over here, please, please. Dude, that's at least a three pounder. Please, 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 please. Oh, he's trying to get off. Yes, yes, bam. Luxor comes through with a tank. Holy crap, look at that. Out of this little pond in the middle of the woods, three pound bass on the Luxor. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Let's go, baby. That is just amazing. On the 1950s reel, it's crazy to think about. This reel's been all over the country. Lots of different people have been using it, all the YouTubers. It has been in Texas, it's been in New Jersey, it's been in some other great places as well. And now it's in Delaware, catching me some tanks. Like, come on, man. That is what I'm talking about. Let's see what we got on the weight right here. Yep. <laughs> Here, stay still, stay still. Stay still. Two, come on, get the three. 2.97, no, it's a three. Hang on, hang on. 
2.91 pound largemouth on a reel from the 1950s. That is what it's all about right there. PH, thank you very much. And as PH himself would say, beauty. <laughs> Let's go. That is really what it's all about right there. That is a special catch on a 1950s reel. That fish right there just goes to show you, don't judge a pond just by how it looks because you never know how big the fish are in there until you actually fish it. And with a pond like this, I mean, honestly, the first time I fished it, I did not think there was gonna be anything with any kind of size in here, but we've caught citation size, trophy crappie, some really nice bass, which you saw right there. I don't even think that's the same one that I caught last time that was just over three pounds. So there's at least a few three pounders swimming around in here. There's pickerel in here. That, the fact that there's pickerel in here just makes no sense. Just a random little pond in the woods. But he slammed that thing and that was actually easier to land than one of the smaller fish because he was putting tension on there that those smaller fish weren't putting on and it was easier to get him reeled in with the uh, slower gear ratio here. I'm so glad I was able to land him though, that's super cool. I don't know where the crappie are at. I mean, we obviously know this place is loaded with crappie. If you haven't seen that video where we caught over a hundred in that one day, I'll link it down in the description field. But this place is just stacked with crappie. For some reason, they're just not hitting right now. That summer crappie bite can be pretty tricky from time to time. Oh, that's another one. That's a crappie. Okay. One of the hundreds that live in this pond. At least you're hungry. Another Luxor victim. Sweet. This is real, the squeaking it makes, it kind of sounds like frogs at night, listen. Sounds like them peepers that come out right before dark. Oh, there's one. Oh, dude, big crappy, big crappy. Yes. I didn't even feel him hit it, I just saw him with the lure in his mouth. Talk about a subtle bite. That's awesome. Right out here, you see the one piece of structure. There's a whole like, I think it's an old Christmas tree that somebody threw in there. And there's another one right over here that you can see when the water's down. And they like to hang out around that, that, and the tree down there. But solid crappy right there, he's a skinny boy. Look how thin he is. It's because there's so many fish in here, the competition for food is, I'm sure, just ridiculous with how many fish there is. But I got him off of that second Christmas tree that somebody threw in there. Ooh, got slammed again. Oh, it came back. Oh, real nice crappy, real nice crappy. Yeah, buddy. Yes, that is a slab again. We are catching some really good crappy today. He is an angry one, but he is a big one. Nice, really nice fish again. Right off that second Christmas tree. That might be the pattern. Let you down in there. Look at those silver and blue metallic coloration to them. These are all fish I'm sure I've caught before. It's just been so long since I've been here, they've forgotten about 
what they ate and got hooked on before. <sighs> Another one, same spot. Oh, dude, another big one, man. Wow. Hopefully you guys could have seen that. Three solid, like, 11 inches is stacked up in that one spot off that Christmas tree. But they're so lethargic. They're just barely biting it, and when you reel them in, they're just kind of stunned. Right about there is where they've been biting. Yup. Oh. <laughs> Right on cue, hit it again. Uh, mm, oh my gosh, what is this? Oh, it's a bass, I thought. If that was a crappie the way he was pulling, it was gonna be a jumbo. That's why I got a little bit excited there. Well, that's a good old largy. The way these fish hit sometimes, these unpressured fish, they hit it like it's a legit, you know, minnow or something like that, that they have no second thoughts about eating it. Because some fish out on the public ponds you'll see sometimes just kind of nip at it, stuff like that. Don't really hit it with a passion, but when you get in a spot like this where it's unpressured and off the grid a little bit, those fish just hit different. Whew, what an absolute awesome day out here. I can't complain with how today went. I mean, we put in a lot of effort, a lot of hard work just to get to these ponds and to fish them and to actually land these fish out here today. Trying a 1950s antique reel from France. Just an all around crazy day. I mean, we caught some pretty solid fish, especially that three pound largemouth on this reel, that was an experience I'll never forget. But I wanna thank PH especially for letting us borrow this reel. Matty's gonna film his video next up, so you guys are gonna see what he catches in a couple of days. He has not fished with it yet, so I'm excited to see what happens with that. Hopefully he can land something huge and really put this thing to the test. But today was just awesome, and I just wanna thank each and every one of you guys for joining me on this little excursion out here in the heat today. I'm so glad we were able to land some fish on this reel. It performed well, to be honest. I mean, obviously the gear ratio is pretty tough to work with because it's so low and it's just hard to crank those fish in. But other than that, it, it was, for a 1950s reel, it performed just so well. And it was really a blast to use. So again, thank you, PH. Really fun challenge you put out there. And I'm gonna say now, in a couple of months, we're gonna be getting on those creek stripers that come up from the bay, up in all those tidal creeks and stuff around us, the creeks and the rivers there. And we'll send this back to you after Maddie's done, but if you wanna send it back to us, we'll put it to the test on some creek stripers that get you know pretty big, almost up to 30 inches in tiny little creeks that are half the size of this place right here. So if uh, that's something you guys would be interested in, comment down below, PH, let me know what you think about that. I'd love to put that thing to the test on one of those fish. But for now, I gotta head out of here. Again, thank y'all for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And I'll see y'all next time.